Welcome to a new video about unlock filter design. In this example, we will discuss another narrow band filter. It will be a band so filter having a multiple feedback configuration. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in SPICE simulations. Okay, let's now first discuss the multiple feedback band stop filter circuit first. That shown here, you see here one negative feedback, another one here using this capacitor C1. So we have two negative feedbacks, so that's why it's called the multiple feedback circuit. And this is a band stop filter. And if you look at the band pass filter multiple feedback configuration we have discussed in the other video, this is really similar to that one. The only change that we have here, one extra resistor. Now, if you now look at a transfer function, which is then input voltage and the output voltage. So the output voltage divided by the input voltage, you get this expression. You see all the components, which you see here in this circuit. Of course, we can make this more practical by selecting some values and also make them equal to each other. We will see that shortly. What you see is that we have here in the numerator a second order expression and a denominator also. This is, not, of course, not a surprise that we have a second order expression in the denominator because this is a second order filter circuit. We also see in addition that we have a, a voltage division here, which is then made by this R4 and R3. And that's actually this part. In order to make this circuit really workable for our band stop filter, we need to make that such that this transfer function is comparable with the standard band stop filter second order. So that means we need to make the following situation. We need to make this term completely zero, which is also shown here. So in order to make this zero, we can also say, let's make then the numerator zero, which is mathematically correct. So that means we need to make this zero. Now we can look at this in the following way. This constraint ensures then that the circuit has the necessary imaginary zeros, which produces then the band stop filter circuit. We can create this condition and make this more easily by setting these two capacitors equal to each other, which we also see here in this circuit. So we can say C1 is equal to C2 and we can define it as the capital letter C. So we have equal capacitors, which is then easily worked out in the de design equations. Then the constraint can be written like so. We have then here two times C times R1, which is also shown here. And this is just a C and you see here the exact same expression. Now we can divide out the C left and right hand side. So we have then this expression and you can also rewrite the equation such that you have the ratio of the two resistors is equal to the another ratio with the multiplication factor of two. So this is the condition we need to meet in order to satisfy the transfer function for the band stop filter. And the obvious choice here is to make the R3 in this case here equal to two times R1, which is then valid for the numerators. In order to make also the denominators equal to each other, we can make R4 is equal to R2. That's just a very simple condition. Then our transfer function can be written like so. You see here again the R4 over R3 plus R4 as we have it here. This term has disappeared. So you see actually only the S squared plus 1 over R1 and R2 and also C squared because we have here C1 times C2 which is both of course C and C. So we get the C squared here. And this term will be then 2C over R2 times C squared will be then effectively 2 over R2C. And again, this term is exact same as that term. So this is, of course, much easily usable in our design equations shortly. Okay, our standard form of a second order band stop filter that is given by this expression we will see shortly. And this will also ensure that the requirements are met. And we have here now the past band gain, the K. We have here the center frequency and we have our bandwidth, the omega bandwidth. Those two are in the radians per second and the passband gain is unitless. So if I now compare this expression of a transfer function with the expression we have for this circuit the transfer function, we can see the following. So the comparing terms, we can say the K is really this term is that, which is R4 over R3 plus R4. Omega bandwidth, which is actually shown here, so 2 over R2C which is also this, so if you look at the original transfer function, you can also say this is it. The next one is about the omega center. So omega center squared will be this term. And of course, if you go to the omega center itself, then you need to take the square of that one. And that is then shown here. Now the design equations are coming here. We can now say, since we have made the requirement that the R4 is equal to R2, we can already start with that one. And also R3 must be two times R1. Now those are the two selections we will make. And the R1 here is related to the quality factor, 
and also the resistor R2. And the quality factor here is again, as we have it also seen in the band pass filter design, the center frequency over the bandwidth. Or you can also write it down as 1 over 2 times the square root of R2 over R1. That is another way to write it down for this filter circuit. And the C here can be calculated using again the center frequency and the square root of the product of the R1 and R2. All of them shown here. So these are the important design equation we need to use in order to design our filter circuit. Okay, let's now go to the design objective. We need to like we like to have a narrow band, multiple feedback, active band stop filter. Specifications are shown here. There is a center frequency of 10 kilohertz. The band width should be 500 hertz. And those are the two specifications. In this example, there is no pass band gain requirement as we had it before. So we will see what it means in our actual design. This is a circuit we already saw, so we will also use this. So let's go first with the calculations. We start with the filter parameter. In this case, we have only one, which is the quality factor, which is the center frequency over the bandwidth, which is then 10,000 over 500, which is in this case 20. So this is a pretty high quality factor value, which also make this a very narrow band filter. The component values are calculated by selecting again equal capacitor method. We select the C1 is equal to C2 and define it as C. We also select the resistor here, R1, I mean R2 as one mega on this one. Then we can start with the design equation as we have it before. So we can say the R4 is equal to R2. That's actually what we had. And since we know the R2, we can calculate also the R1 because we know the Q and we can continue like so. So let's do that one by one. So R4 is equal to R2, 1 mega ohm. R1 is equal to R2 over 4 times the Q squared. So you substitute here the values because we have a 20 from the filter parameter. And we have 10 to the power 6, which is R1 mega ohm. And this is then 625 ohms. R3 from here, which is just a double of the R1, which is then 2 times this one, which is then 1000. 250 ohms, so 1.25 kilo ohm. And the final one is the capacitor C, which is then calculated from here. We know R1, we know R2, so we can substitute here. And we also know the omega center, which is 2 pi times there, this 10,000. That's actually shown here. And when you do the math, you get here the 636.6 picofarads. Okay, so we have now all the capacitors and the resistor values for this design. Now, design is now in this case completed, so we can look at the simulation circuit before we do the actual results. You see here the operation amplifier, the R2, R4, each 1 mega ohm, R1 is 625 ohm, and the R3 1.25 kilo ohm as we have it here. And also the two capacitors are equal to each other, 636.6 picofarads. Okay, let's now go to the body plot, looking at the simulation results. Again, the circuit, this is the logarithmic scale frequency, and this is, this is the gain. You see here that first, let's start with the notch frequency, which is indeed this sharp peak down, which is our notch, happens at 10 kilohertz, which is our center frequency, so which is actually as we wanted. We see here the DC gain is approximately minus 0.01 dB, which is more exact, this value for the K, which was our passband gain. Because we said R4 over R3 plus R4 is the passband gain. So if you now look at the values, which was in our case 1 million or 1 mega ohm, over this 1250 ohm, plus again 1 million, so we get here 800 over 801, which is an exact expression. If you now convert that to dBs, you get very close to this value, so in this, in this case, which is correct. Now looking at the other extreme, which is our high frequency gain, we get the exact same result, so we can also do that in the same manner. In addition, we see here the lower cutoff frequency in our simulation data. You see here this gain is approximately minus 0.01 dB, so we need to go down by 3.01 dB. That means we go to, you go to minus 3.02 dB. Okay, then you have here that at, this happens at 9,753 Hz, which is our lower cutoff frequency. Now we go down very sharp and then go up again and then reach exact same gain at another frequency which is then 10,254 hertz. Now looking at the upper cutoff frequency here, then we have now two frequencies, lower cutoff and upper cutoff now. The difference, so the upper cutoff frequency minus the lower cutoff frequency is the bandwidth. We should be 500 of course. Now looking at this calculation we get here 501. 
Why is this difference? Now, of course, because of this rounding of errors and also the component values are not exact as we have calculated. So there are slightly changes in the actual uh, design we have here. But this is a really small error, just one hertz, which is perfectly fine for more, most practical purposes. So we can say our design is completed and we have achieved our goal. All right, for example, considering the narrow band, multiple feedback, active band stop filter, we have calculated our component values using the design equations and verified these in the SPI simulations. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.